Hello and welcome to part 8 of machine learning and pattern recognition for the use of algorithmic trading in stocks and forex where we left off. Um, basically look like this and we have a percent change pattern storage and we've got pattern recognition um, and then this old graph forex function that we haven't used. Now what we really need to do is a couple housekeeping things. Really this isn't our pattern recognition. This is really just a function that does current pattern. So we'll rename that to current pattern. Next thing I'd like us to do is instead of, let's see, pat for rec, we'll take this out because we want this actually to be a global variable. So we'll cut that and paste this pat for rec empty uh, array or empty list up at the top and take it out of current pattern. Once we've done that, now let's actually make our, our real pattern recognition function. So that didn't really make much sense as I was about to do this. So now we're going to define our pattern recognition function. So that's going to be define pattern recognition, empty parameters, come down. And now what we want to do is for each, um, each pattern in our pattern array that we have, we want to compare that to the current pattern in question. So uh, we're literally going to do an array or a for loop that does that. So for each pattern, so you just kind of make up each pattern, right? This is defining a variable. So for each pattern in that array, pattern array, what do we want to do? Well, we want to, we want to compare similarity, right? <clears throat> so the way that I, I, I vote that we do this is we're going to do, uh, for example, similarity one. Now there's probably better ways to do this, but the outcome is actually pretty good. Um, this way, so we're just going to do it this way, and I think this is the easiest way to swallow. Is what we're going to do is we're going to compare each step of the way. So from point one to point two, let's say we have a 20% change. We won't, but let's say we did. In the, in, let's say we've got a 20% change in our in our current pattern. So we're going to want to find so, and then in the in in our memory, say we've got another one that's got a 20% change from point one to point two. That's a good start. But what about from point three to point four, or point two to point three rather? Let's say we've got a uh, fifteen percent change, and in the current pattern, or in you know recognition wise, um, we've got a fourteen percent change. Pretty close, pretty similar. Let's keep going, and so on all the way through. As opposed to from point one to point two, we have a ten percent change. That's agree, and then from point two to point three, one has a twenty percent change, the other one has a negative three percent change. Right? That's that's kind of off. Right? So it's not going to follow the same pattern. So um, anyway, with that in mind, what we're going to do to figure out how similar something is, um, the way we can do this is do a percentage change. So what is the percent change from point A to point B? So if they're really close, the percentage change is maybe like 1 to 2%, right? So from there, if they're 1 to 2 point, 1 to 2% different, that means they're 98 to, point, 98 to 99% similar, right? So the way that we'll do this is we'll take... Um, we'll do percent change and we'll take each pattern and we want to for each pattern we'll take the first step in that pattern and then we'll compare it to pat for rec their first step as well so what was the percent change for the each one of these patterns first step and what's the percent change now the next thing that we need to keep in mind too is this needs to be how it's a how similar are we right and you can't have if you had a negative similarity that's really a positive right you can't have that you couldn't have a negative similarity because it's not we're just comparing things right we're not actually measuring a percentage change so let's say pattern for rec is two percent and this is one percent right um, or let's say um, the percentage change right was like a, this was a one percent and this was a two percent or something like that I, I suppose and or this was a two and this was a one well the difference between those is identical either way you look at it but depending on which way you ordered them this would yield an either a positive or a negative so the next thing that we actually want to do is throw absolute bars around this as well so abs and abs so 98 and 100 versus 100 compared to 98 really that difference fundamentally is the same and so you wouldn't want to have a negative anyways um, the next thing, 
So that does that. So that will give us, you know, hopefully a small number. And then how similar are they? Well, that's as simple as a 100.00 minus that, right? Now what we need to do is do this. And let me just confirm the, okay, cool. So everything else worked. So now what we want to do is do the same thing for everything else. And again, we could do this with a for or a while loop. Uh, but it's just better to put it all out so it's easier to follow. Um, but you could make this a little better and more efficient. So 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And then also to make this these lengths more dynamic, it would also help to do a for or a while loop. But again, like I, like I just said, I, I think it's good to... to write everything out for now. Later we can shorthand it and make it a lot more efficient. But anyway, so once we've done that, let's say, you know, this is 80% similar, 95% similar, 60% similar, 75% similar, and so on. The next thing we want to do is let's just average all of the similarities together, right? So how sim overall are we? Well, probably the easiest way to do this would be just how sim equals sim1 plus sim2 plus sim3 plus sim4 plus sim5 plus sim6 plus sim7 plus sim8 plus sim9 plus sim10 <sighs> divided by 10.00. Don't forget your decimals, just in case. But it's pretty likely all these will end up as a, as a decimal. Anyway, um, so that will do uh, how similar. And again, once we streamline this, this would also be streamlined, so you wouldn't have to type it out so badly. But anyway, that's that. Now, now what we want to do is let's say um, we require everything to be, um, let's say, 70. We want the only patterns we want to know about are ones that are 70% um, the same. So we'll just say if how sim is greater than 70. Um, now we want to know some things. So first of all, um, we want to know, um, let's go ahead and print out, um, I know, no, uh, no quotes there, pat4, right, so this is the pattern we're using. Then we'd want to say print each pattern. And then not only that, we actually want to know what the outcome is, right? So first, um, let's do some stuff to, to split these up. So chances are we might actually have a few that match. So I'm just going to put some symbols in here to help us like visually read these printouts when they come. So we'll do that, 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 and then between the pattern for recognition and each pattern, let's put, I don't know, some of these equal signs. Just, it helps a lot to split it up visually, and so just put those in there. Now what we need to do Again, as we, once we compare the patterns, that's great. We can compare patterns, but we also want to pull what is the outcome, right? What's our predicted outcome? So the next thing we need to do is not pattern for recognition, but each pattern. Remember how they, we store not only the patterns in the pattern array, we store the performance, right? That future performance of that pattern in the performance array. So now when we come down here, what we need to do is figure out, first of all, what number in that array are we? So we'll call this pat decks. And that pat dex is going to be pattern array dot index each pattern. And if you recall, each pattern is in reference to this for each pattern in pattern array. So each pattern is an array, right? And so it's an array within an array. Keep that in mind. Now it's going to take each pattern and it's going to run it through the pattern array to get the index number. So the number in that array will correspond to the pat dex. So then that means our predicted outcome will be um, performance array and then pat dex. You know, so whatever the pat dex number is, so let's say pat dex is 500, the outcome would be performance array 500, right? So what we'll do is we'll come down here and we'll just do um, print and then we'll do some of this and then we'll say print and um, We'll just say, I don't know, predicted outcome. And then keep in mind, this is a percentage change. And we'll do performance array. And we want pat dex. Cool. Now, the next thing we want to do, we might want to add like a five-second timer just in case, but I don't, 
I don't think 70 is going to be too uh, too liberal. So we'll save this. And you'll see later on, actually, we'll end up lowering the house similar array, probably. So I don't think we'll get too many. But since we'll be referencing a full day's worth and our pattern's only 10 long, we should get a healthy amount. So uh, what we want to do now, really, is let's actually go to the bottom because we need to call a few things to happen at the same time for us now. And let me just shorten the gap here. Okay, so first we need to store the patterns. So we'll run pattern storage first. Then we need to know what's our current pattern. So we'll take current pattern, run that. Subsequently, we want to do um, pattern recognition, which is what we just finished building right up here. And now, kind of like before, we want to have like a full runtime of the entire script. So I'm just, before we load this NumPy array, because that takes a few seconds, we're just going to do total start equals time dot time right at the top of the script. And at the bottom, after we've run everything, we'll say total end equals time dot time. And really, actually, here's what we'll do. We'll just total time will equal the current, you know, time dot time minus total start. I think that's the right variable. Let me just make sure. Yeah, total start. And then we'll just print out. Um, Entire processing time took, oops, comma, total time and uh, seconds. Okay, oops, let's do it in there, save. All right, hopefully we haven't left anything crazy here. We'll run it, see what we get. Okay, so it's running, I'm going to try, okay, drag it over in time. So it's storing everything, stores all the patterns. Wow, we got a lot of patterns. <laughs> I figured with 70, we wouldn't get so many. That is a lot of patterns. And we're still going. Let me just cut. Okay. Control C will interrupt this. So, so uh, let's see. Do we do greater than 70? We did. Let's say, let's do 90 then. Let's see if we can. Um, since it is a large array. I just want to see like a full processing time printout for you guys to see where we're where we are. Are right, still getting a huge list. We definitely shouldn't be getting this huge list. Let me scroll up to the top here. I mean, everything this looks good here. I'm just a little confused while we're printing out so much. Uh, it just shouldn't be this many. It almost looks like we're printing out, you know, every every single one. I mean, they look kind of close to each other, but something's definitely awry. Hmm, let me close out of here. Oh, right. Okay, that was uh, pretty absurd. What we did wrong is where similarity is a similarity between each pattern and pattern for recognition, and this is zero zero. Um, so in the last video, I, th I guess all we did was 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, did the house similarity, and we ran it. Whoops. So, so we have to fix uh, this stuff too, right? We're comparing the parts in the array. So if the first step was um, similar, then the entire thing is, is being considered similar. So that's why we're getting so many. So we have to fix uh, this part. So anyway... Uh, you know, this is zero, 0, this should be 1, 1, this should be 2, 2, right? Each part of those arrays. So 1, 2, 3, 6, 7, 8, and 9. And then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, oops, 9. Okay, save that. Now what we need to do, I'm going to let's close out of all the uh, open stuff. Now let's run this again. And hopefully it's not as wild this time. And actually, we set. The, I think it's still set at 90, so we might not even get anything. So we got uh, one, um, and that just printed out our pattern array, so we didn't actually get any similarity, which is uh, not surprising. Let me go back. Uh, we want how similar of 70. Let's run that. Bring it over. Uh, and wait. 
There we go. Finally, we got some patterns. <laughs> now, and that's a little bit better, right? And the entire processing time to compare the current pattern to all previous patterns took about seven seconds, um, two of which we know was storage of the pattern. So we could knock off two seconds immediately. And we could also probably do some of this processing quicker as well. But anyway, um, these are all of the patterns that were similar. So let's just go look at the first one here. So as we can see, the first pattern, 00321, 00321, basically an identical uh, first step. And, oh, actually, you know, sorry. This is the pattern, right? And this is also the same pattern. So we really need to compare this pattern to this pattern. So 00321 and then some numbers, and then 00321 and some numbers. You know, after the uh, 321, they start to be different. But as you can see, the first step is very similar. The second step is also very similar. Third step is not at, as similar. Fourth step, very similar. Fifth step, a little bit off. Sixth step, very similar again. Anyway, you get the idea. Very similar steps. Predicted outcome here is a slight negative. Um, we continue, let's just look at the other predicted outcomes. Slight negative. This one's a uh, slight positive, positive negative, 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 negative. So most likely uh, we're kind of leaning towards a very negative outcome here, or at least, you know, most of the stuff says the outcome will be negative. So that's one pattern. Um, we use 70% similarity, and um, these are the similar patterns, and soon we'll be actually displaying these so you can actually see what a 70% similar pattern actually looks like. It's very similar, actually. So anyway, that's that. Sorry about the little hiccup there. I can't believe that uh, we didn't do that, but usually pretty easy. And that's kind of why you really want to run step by step, run your programs to see what, what is going wrong. Um, so it's pretty easy to figure out, okay, well, the last thing we did was this. <laughs> why are we getting this? And uh, so yeah, it became pretty obvious pretty quick. So that's going to conclude this video. In the next video, we'll, I'll be showing you guys, uh, we'll be graphing up our patterns to show the similarity between them. And so here's like basically an example of what we'll be doing in the next video. And you can see that, okay, there, we've got one pattern here. The blue line is our uh, pattern in question. The green line is a quote unquote similar pattern. And so we can graph these up and, and continue getting um, similar patterns. Here's another similar pattern, basically. Same blue line, but the green line's another another pattern basically. Um, so anyway, that's what we'll be doing in the next video, showing you guys the uh, similar patterns visually so you can see what a 70% similar-ish pattern looks like. Um, so anyways, as always, thanks for watching, thank you for your support, your subscriptions, and until next time.